Talking to the moon. When thinking of the rationale for this module's application, I didn't necessarily want to choose a planet because I really have a personal relationship already with the moon. <laughs> um, I've been obsessed with the moon since I can remember. And while this is a fictitious project this week, I think it's more enjoyable for me to, I don't know, do what I love. Especially since we are learning about how a learning environment is actually more effective when you are passionate or you're finding some meaningful purpose in the assignment. So here we go. A little bit about the moon. And if the moon had children, what would those moon kids need to learn? That's why I love the moon. Another reason why I love the moon so much? Well, the moon is responsible for making those tides for us to be able to play in our oceans. So the moon makes me have a whole lot of fun. So if the moon had moon kids, I'm gonna take a look at what I would need to know about them to be able to provide them a successful learning environment. Far out. As I investigate these moon children, I have to ask myself, well, what way do these moon children learn? What physical environment are these moon children going to be living in? What's important to these moon children? What preferences to learning the content do these moon children prefer? And what motivates them? Hmm. Now, just a little moon memo. The moon is roughly 2,000 miles in diameter and is closely made up to the same stuff that Earth is. Humans do have the capability and capacity to one day live on the moon, which really tells me that alien or foreign children and learners would too. Now, because of this and this connection to close humans, I assume most moon children would have the same type of brain-based learning with just different adaptations. It is assumed at some point that humans will be living on the moon, and we will in fact have moon children that will adapt to the atmosphere around them. However, learning environments will have to be kept mostly inside, demanding for a level of physical or kinesthetic activity in the classroom to reach those learners. Of course, technology will be at the helm of all classrooms, as students will be paperless, working from electronic devices that even we do not know about yet. As I investigate these moon children, of course community would also be important as communities would have to be very collected and connected as a main purpose of residing on the moon and in learning on the moon is to sustain the livability of the moon and its resources. Little boxes on the hillside, little boxes made of ticky tacky, little boxes on the hillside, little boxes all the same. 
As we design these learning environments for the different moon children, it is important to remember that they do have to be enclosed in these brick and mortar style buildings for their safety. However, having wide open spaces and kinesthetic or physically active activities in the classroom is important for them to work off that extra energy. Students learn best through their own search of information. Many students, while there is a large range of diversity, do prefer the use of technology and guided education for what they serve best in. You see, an example would be the lack of paper that's used on the moon and how technology is required to have any coursework completed. Many students are going to find that their purpose, especially in classes, is not just to learn the basics, but to also apply what they're learning to try to focus on how to further sustain the livability of the moon and its resources. Because our moon children come from a tight and very close-knit community, it is important that they have a positive and inviting environment, as they may feel slighted or pushed from one side to the other as resources are scarce. It's important that children are promoted and provided the verbal affirmations that they need in order to continue learning and achieving. This is the future. This is like the apex of the vortex of joint engineering. It was quite challenging to create a learning environment for a learner that I've never encountered or a learner who may not even look, act, or emote the way that humans do. But when I reflect on this assignment, I can tell you that understanding student diversity is crucial when creating a proper learning environment that's personalized to the needs of each student. By taking the learner outside of our entire world and looking at a fictitious universal student, you have to understand that environments or the physical settings are completely different. That's right. You have to understand the physical settings and the physical needs of that setting for the student. On top of meeting those needs, you also have to figure out how the students learn, how their brains work. Do they even have brains? It's ideas like this that require teachers to be innovative thinkers. Because as technology adapts and changes, our students, the way they learn and the way they stay engaged will change as well. And so we have to constantly be thinking on our feet to adapt with our innovations to meet the needs of all of our learners, as diverse as they may be. I'm talking to my own reflection. I'm talking to my own reflection. But I ain't talking about you. I'm talking to my own reflection.